guys. Wow. Sorry, guys. You know, you like open the camera and you don't realize that your hair is just. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to what we were going to say. We're here today to talk about vice and vice token, um, vice industry token. Let me get that right. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to walk through the white paper. Um, pretty good review, uh, pretty decent white paper. There are some things that popped out. Um, you'll notice I've got them like flagged and we'll walk through the white paper. Um, just general feedback. Overall, if, for those of you who don't know, and I'd be very surprised if uh, some of you don't know Vice, uh, Vice is the platform where you can get paid to watch porn. Um, we set out a poll of a couple of different types of reviews I could do and Vice was the one that everybody was most interested. Um, I don't think it's any coincidence given the fact the poll I put out was at the same time as the Pornhub Verge Currency Partnership. So. We won't go too much into that. I actually won't touch Pornhub and Verge, um, but it is definitely something that, as far as media, brought the attention and gave Vice another instance where it could step up and be back in the spotlight, even if the spotlight wasn't necessarily on Verge and Pornhub, or it wasn't on Vice, but it was on Verge and Pornhub. <laughs> it was an opportunity to then again start a discussion about Vice, and I remember a couple weeks ago this was all I talked about and this was part of the discussion with a lot of crypto investors and what could this mean for the future of cryptocurrency. So we'll go through um, just generally, you know, pornography is one of the biggest industries globally. It is multi, multi-billion dollar industry and there is just money to be made in this industry. And so seeing so many cryptocurrency companies uh, projects come out with a focus on this industry, I'm not surprised. And you know, if you are surprised, I'd be kind of a little taken back. It is, you know, so beneficial to have these tokens that people can anonymous, anonymously be making purchases through. Um, you know, even your bank teller can see when you go in and ask questions, people just have visibility. I mean, let me give you a different example. When you call your credit card company and you're trying to verify all the purchases that you made because your credit card might have been stolen or you, you notice that the balance isn't right, so you want to reconcile it or you want to report things. I know that that's a hot topic for a lot of people. There's been more and more recent issues with car credit card companies and these types of things. Well, when you call them, if you've made purchases, it's going to come up whatever company it might be, they're going to be asking you, did you spend this amount at this place or for this service or for these videos? I don't know. I don't know what people buy. Um, and you have to verify it. Whereas cryptocurrencies and this decentralized network is allowing people now anonymity in these purchases that they previously didn't have. And if that wasn't enough, Vice has taken it now a step further and has allowed you to be rewarded for different things that you do during the course of watching videos or whatever else you guys watch. I don't know. I also don't want to know. This could be like a really dangerous topic for as far as like comments go. Oh, it'll be interesting. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna keep it like PG, P the whole way through. We're not going to go into anything else. Uh, so if that's why you watch this video, please, like, just continue watching, obviously. Don't click away. Just don't expect anything, like, R-rated. So here we go. Let's get through this. I swear to God, guys, I really don't try and do this, but I need to disclaim. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, everything that I say on this video is my own opinion is my own opinion that's been formed based on reading about Vice, doing my own research, talking to the team over Twitter. Um, I am not being paid by Vice. I, I don't usually say that, but like I will mention the fact that I have corresponded with them over Twitter. So I will say that in no way have I taken any type of token, any type of incentive to give this review. Um, hopefully that's shown by the fact that I will give an unbiased review. Um, and that you should do your own research and you should form your own opinions about things and you should not invest after like just based on this video this is not investment advice do your own research form your own opinions 
and just be an educated investor. That is why we are here. We're here to talk about perspective. We're here to talk through things. Unfortunately, I always forget this part, so we'll insert it in the middle of the video right before we go to the white paper. So here we go, guys. All right, guys, so here we are, and we're in the Vice white paper. So we'll go ahead and go through. Um, I don't know what's acting up, but my PowerPoint, or my, I guess my PDF is acting up, and it doesn't scroll as easily. So if the scrolls seem choppy, just bear with me. I'm planning to get that figured out because I don't know what's going on. But this is the white paper, and, um, you know, they hit a lot of points. One of the things that I really liked about this is it, it didn't necessarily read like the average white paper. Um, and it was also a very easy read and you can pick this up for yourself and take a read of it um i liked the fact that it was as somebody who was would look to invest this was just something easy to follow they made their points it was just very clearly articulated um and that's something i like some of the projects you see out there that are more technically based or they they just throw in huge technical sections and take 30 pages to just discuss the algorithms and everything it's just not necessarily needed if you invest for the tech and if you are somebody who invests based on the type of algorithm that they're using versus another or just very minute details into the technology that's that's definitely something that you would want to see but seeing 30, 40 pages of it in a white paper where you're really just trying to grasp the project and grasp the uh, idea of the project, it's just, I like the fact that this one just didn't burden you with that. Um, now, there is possibly some of you out there who are saying, I don't see that technical discussion in here. I don't understand the algorithms. I know it's Ethereum-based. I know some basic high-level things about what this is anticipating using, but I don't see that detail. And for some of you, that might be the deal breaker. So I will point that out. I didn't necessarily consider it a deal breaker from my perspective, but for each his own as far as they take that. So they go into the adult entertainment and just an industry overview in general and just discuss the fact that, you know, the current market for pornography is just not getting you a profit margin that you should. Um, there's just too many, as they say here, too many hands in the pot. There's too many parties who are trying to take the money from the content or from the ad revenue. And as I'm sure many viewers out here know, most, I don't actually know, I can't say most, some pornography can be found for free and you do not have to pay. They actually generate the revenue based on ad content on the sites or through whatever platform you might view it. Um, I can't say most because I actually don't have a statistic in front of me to know how much pornography out there is actually fee-based versus what would be free. Um, so they go through this and it was actually something very interesting that I pointed out. A lot of the um, discussion, too many hands in the pot here that they're talking about is kind of advertiser-based and how many people and how many different um, you know, platforms it has to go through before it gets to the end user and each person gets their cut of the pie. It read for me, and this was very interesting, but it read very similarly to me from the Ethereum work paper. Wow, Ethereum white paper. Um, I haven't read that one in a couple months now, and I just remember reading a few of these statistics and just looking at it, and it just read very similarly. I mean, lo and behold, the two projects are very similarly based. They're giving rewards for based on use, and the rewarding users bringing in more traffic and bringing in more users to actually look at the content, thus providing more viewers of the ads. So very similarly based concept, and I'm not really sure, um, I'd have to actually look, and I didn't actually think of this until now to look and see, did the referring white paper get posted first or did the white paper actually come out first, which was posted to the internet first. But it was just an interesting piece that I found, um, not saying that either, leverage from each other they are in very sim they are making very similar points in the business case as to why they should exist and so it was just something that i found and for those of you who don't know or didn't watch my previous video on referium i actually did very much like the idea of referium and conceptually again i do similarly like the idea and concept of vice here so we go through um I'll point out there are a lot of statistics in here and that will come back here in a second, but 
did want to point that out. And we go through and let's see, what was I capturing here? Um, ah, so one of the things that I found interesting is they're going through and you're getting paid for actual um, activity and participation on websites or in viewership of adult content. Um, and one of the things, and I don't know that I pointed this out in the referring video, but one of the things that I find interesting is that they, they continue to say that the ability to capture authentic user engagement and the point of interaction. Um, one of the things that I am curious to know when I didn't see it addressed in here is manipulation and false viewership. So there are websites out there, there are um, an ability to, for instance, if, if Vice has a technology that watches your computer and says, hey, is this person actively engaging? Is, is the mouse moving? Is, are they clicking on things? Are they commenting? There are certain sites out there that can help move your mouse every couple of seconds um, just so you can be more active. It keeps your screen awake um, just so that you can continuously view something. I'd be interested to know how the technology is being built to try and weed out false viewers who could be getting um, rewards and tokens for, you know, kind of setting it up and walking away and just benefiting from that. Um, and I'm not really sure if they've thought of that, but it would be something I'd be interested to hear more about or see their position on. It's just not discussed here at all. Um, and so that was something in a reward-based token that I would look to understand a little bit more. So we keep going, they go into the vice industry token. How is it gonna work? How are you going to be actually rewarded? And this is something um, I did mention earlier that I reached out on Twitter to the vice team to actually confirm. One of the things that I was very interested in is you hear vice talking about some of their partnerships, Penthouse, um, Playboy, a couple other, what we can call kind of the premium content. We'll go with that, yeah that works. That's how I'll define it. Premium content. And you see these partnerships. And so I, what I was really interested that really wasn't specifically defined in here is you're getting benefits for viewing, for liking, for engaging with these platforms. But I was also very interested to understand, does a purchase need to be made? Do you need to actually buy some type of material from say Penthouse in order to get these benefits? And they did confirm, no, you do not have to actually purchase any content in order to actually get back certain rewards. But one of the benefits is that you might actually get certain discounts through the partnerships using the Vice token to actually buy that premium content. So that wasn't specifically laid out here. I had to do my own additional research, you could say, by reaching out to the team. But again, the team was very helpful in that and actually did help clarify that. Um, so they go through certain portals, token distribution, and how they're going to um, distribute. I will note, for those of you who do look at certain metrics, um, they are starting with 4 billion tokens, and then they are going to be launching 10% additional tokens every year. Let me, let me re-say that. In the first year after they come out, they're going to issue an additional 10% of the amount created in the Genesis box, so the 4 billion tokens. Every year thereafter, they will reduce that 10% by 1%. So in the second year, they will issue another 9% of that Genesis block. The next year, 8%. And they, this will continue for 10 years. Um, it just, to me, jumped out. And I really don't focus on metrics that much. But that seems like a very large number of tokens. And so I was very interested by that. Um, and just kind of to understand... You are going to get back these rewards, but almost for the first 10 years, it seems like there could be what viewers would see as a dilution of the value of those. And I'd be interested to just understand how the team is trying to anticipate that dilution of value and how it intends to reward its viewers. Is it going to reward them by making sure that a certain number of the newly issued tokens go to those current users. There are certain airdrops and steam holders will be benefited. So they are planning certain types of benefits to their current holders, but it would be interested just to understand, you know, making sure that your current holders aren't diluted every year when you just issue more tokens. So 
won't go really into any more. These are kind of what the comments are saying, but found that interesting. Ah, another point I found interesting. So it's just kind of certain things that you see caveated in white papers um, kind of jump out to me, and this was one of them. They plan to do an airdrop to their steam holders, and they plan to do it by January 1st, 2021, um, possibly earlier. Actually, so let me go back. The first three times I've read this, I have read this statement wrong. So this actually makes me much more happy. I have been reading this as they will do the airdrop on January 1st, 2021, and possibly earlier. And that has made me uncomfortable because I thought that they had set a date. As I read this out loud, I read it correctly. I feel much better. So in the next few years, what is that? Four years from three years because it's 2018 and I can do math. In the next three years, they're going to do an airdrop to their steam holders. So technically they could turn around and do this airdrop at any point in time. They could do it next month, but they are setting a date that they will in fact do it by January 1st, 2021. Guys, let's have a meeting January 2nd, 2021. Let's mark it on the calendar. Make sure they did their airdrop. Ah, uh, now this stood out, and this is one of the really big things I like about Vice. So for any of you who have tried or have successfully gotten to be a part of the crowd sale um, and the ICO, <clears throat> Vice has this refund option, and there is a period of time, I believe until June 28th, 2018, that if you've invested, you can actually call and have your Ethereum token, because it's an Ethereum-based ICO, you can have your Ethereum tokens refunded. Now, I actually know somebody who benefited from this. They got into the ICO, they invested a number of Ethereum, and coming through, they said, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. After all, I want a refund. And they successfully actually got back their initial investment. It's just very beneficial to see that a team can do this. And this was just something that kind of added a layer of trust to me and just, you know, they're doing it so that their investors can kind of get to see the VIT token and they can really see the benefit of it and try and get to, you know, explore the functionality of it before actually finalizing their investment. And if they don't feel comfortable with it, they can pull back. Now, I'd be interested to understand how many refunds have happened. Um, I haven't actually looked, I haven't gone and tried to look at that, um, but I would be interested to just kind of see their net position currently from the original ICO to see how many people have actually, you know, used this. And, you know, if a lot of people see the benefit of this, you know, is this something we're gonna see other ICOs kind of picking up? Um, and I'd kind of like, candidly, I'd really like to ask the team, how have they seen that this has played out for them? Have they seen a lot of people coming in and just refunding or has it been to their benefit that the t people feel more trusting? I'd be really interested on the other side of this ICO um, to fully understand kind of the feedback from the team and how they feel that this refund contract period benefited or hurt them. The timeline, so I won't really go into the timeline that much. If you want the details of it, it you, it's right here. And actually, if you want the details of it here, it's twice. Um, so they, they give you the timeline here and then they give you the exact same timeline here. Um, so I found it interesting, you know, one's more visual, one's more list-like, but I'm not really sure the idea behind the exact same timeline twice, but hey, it was just kind of like a filler in my opinion. They filled some space, but what are you gonna do? Um, they go through the team and I will say they have some very um, reputable people on this team. They've got people in the industry. They've got people who have strong backgrounds um, in Hustler, Penthouse, um, Playboy. They've got just a strong team. And as I said before, one of the things that I really like is the team is very responsive. Um, now, I guarantee that these aren't the people running the Twitters, but the team has been very responsive. They've been very, very um, well communicated and just active and I've seen just a lot of participation based on the team. And they're very easy to contact and reach out to. And I like that. I like when a team is there. I like when they're responsive and easy to talk to. You can ask them what questions you want. And they're just going to answer and just be candid with you. Again, 
it was another element for me that just added to the trust factor um, and that I really liked. So we'll keep going. Um, they have an FAQ section, so if you're interested in just some quick points or just answers to quick uh, positions, you can go in there and ask. I will say again, like this was something I found interesting in the FAQ. They actually asked, how is it different from other types of tokens in similar field? And one of the things that they point out is that you do not have to buy content. Um, you, you do not have to purchase from Penthouse in order to get, and get rewards for viewing it. Um, you can go on and just through their, their sites, as you actively engage on the sites, you can receive those tokens. So that was something that differentiates them. And I like that they called it out, um, you know, as opposed to saying like, or leaving it to the user to figure that out on their own. Um, they do do this one little blurb right at the end, kind of the proof of brain and what is their concept and some of the technology. But again, this one's just not a technological based white paper. And so just proceed knowing that. Um, the last thing I will mention and something I was really unhappy with at the end of this entire white paper is there's no references. And that makes me really upset because if you go back to the beginning, like I said, they quote a number, a number of statistics in here. And, you know, the we'll go back to Referium again. When Referium did it, one of the strengths of the Referium white paper is the sources. And actually, the Referium white paper review I did was based on using sources as a way to really validate what a team and a project is trying to do. Here, there's just no sources. And so... I can't go through and validate some of the t statistics or even see what types of sites they got these statistics from. C are they biased? Are they trying to um, sway people or is it a truly unbiased source? And so it was something I found interesting. It was definitely a negative in my book. Um, I don't like that it's just not there and you don't know where this team is getting stuff. So front to back, it's a relatively short white paper. Again, very easy read, not technologically dense. Um, and so yeah, that there is your Vice white paper. All right, guys. So that was Vice. Um, really briefly, it's generally a project I like. I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, I think once they get the main net up and going, it'll be very interesting to see how things play out. Um, it'll also be very interesting to just kind of see the value of the rewards. I know some people with... Um, not to go back to Referium, but some people who have gone through platforms like Referium, I know that they've occasionally been upset with what type of rewards they do get. Just the value just isn't what you'd expect. So I will be interested to just kind of see how the value of the rewards comes out. Um, and just kind of, is it there? Is it actually an incentive that brings people? Because if it is, this has a lot of power behind it. Um, and it definitely has that potential. So Please go do your own research. Please go look at other sources. Don't just listen to YouTube people talking. Um, and I know I'm including myself in that. But go do your own research. Go look at Vice. Um, reach out. The team has been super helpful. Um, very, very appreciative of that Vice team. Um, and yeah, just let me know your thoughts, actually. Um, separate from Vice. Um, I would be interested in just having some feedback from you guys. You know, my videos typically are between like 20 and 26 minutes. I don't know where this one will land, hopefully in that window. But um, I've shortened them a lot, and I think it's really hard to put like a good technical review in a quick manner where you're not like getting bogged down in a ton of things in that time frame. Um, I am cognizant of the time frame, and if that's too long for you guys, I'd like to know that feedback. Um, also, what would you cut? Um, I generally have only included me, like the me video, like this right now, um, before and after so you guys can actually get to know me and kind of see my personality and see like the weird things I'm doing. Even when the screen's turned to my computer screen, this all still happens. Um, so I'd like to know, like if you guys don't like that, then we can cut it. If you do like it, then great. Um, it's just kind of like my one point to interact with you guys. And that's the idea behind it. So let me know. Um, I do want to be cognizant to like what you guys want to hear and what you guys want to see and like how long you want it to be. Um, so if these are too long, just let me know. We'll work to get that reduced. 
also I just took like a minute and a half to say that so <laughs> this one doesn't count this video doesn't count for that um but yeah let me know your feedback here um you can also always reach out to me on twitter I know a bunch of you guys do it's great um my twitter is at rocky Corey. um you can also reach out through at abuzz underscore ladies or at altcoin buzz io um and we'd be happy to hear from you hit subscribe guys thanks <laughs>